In today's episode of the Brains Bite Back podcast, we are joined by Dr. Bilge Gregory, CEO and founder of Vital Connection MD, a state-of-the-art health clinic, to talk about how she is using the metaverse to educate and build connections with her clients. And in this episode, we cover Bill Gay's experience as a doctor and why she likes to focus on a variety of medicines from east to west, how she uses the metaverse to create a digital operating room where players can carry out virtual liposuction procedures. And in addition to this, Bill Gay also shares some advice for business owners who want to take their businesses into the metaverse. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Thanks for having me. Basically, I am a medical doctor. I'm actually board certified and very experienced in the field of emergency medicine. I practiced uh, from start of training in 2000 when I graduated medical school all the way up until 2018. Um, I actually left the practice and we could probably spend the entire hour as to why, but ultimately it was a consequence of burnout and I was hospitalized twice in one year. And basically the universe was showing me messages that I needed to change my focus and my direction. And at the time, and I, as, as I've always felt, I never wanted to stop being a doctor. I've always wanted to be a doctor, but I wasn't quite sure where I'd end up. So ultimately through a lot of personal development and a lot of healing, I started discovering more about procedures in cosmetic surgery. I was introduced to it by actually a coworker in the emergency department um, at the time and got trained and certified in uh, high definition liposuction and then started learning more about cosmetic injectables. And ultimately, once I left the hospital system, I basically opened this company up from the square one with no patients because I had to change my life in a very drastic way. So it was a labor of love and still is. I very much enjoy what I do. In fact, I feel like I have more of an impact on patients than I did in the emergency department. Of course, my interactions with them were very brief there and there'd be a lot of fear and pain involved. So a lot of times I wasn't their last stop and I didn't necessarily feel like they remembered me in particular as a practitioner more so maybe the consultant in the hospital or whoever did their procedure at the end, right? So for me, um, opening up Vital Connection MD and the reason I termed it as such is because I love connecting with people. And if I can't help them in, any, in, my, in the capacities I have, then I refer them out to another expert in another field. And I basically reinvented a little bit in my, in my eyes um, how I practice medicine. I actually did, to a degree, abandon some of the things I was taught in medical school. A lot of it is about pushing drugs and surgery, a lot about pharmaceuticals. And over the course of time, as I said before, because I was hospitalized twice in one year, I, I was the patient. So I was introduced to a variety of drugs and some surgery. And uh, having had impacts that were, in some cases, negative from that, I started to understand the power of the mind in the body and how it heals. And there were some things that I was actually able to um, improve upon in my life through the more of the mindful techniques and behavioral and thoughts and things of that nature, as opposed to what I would say would be the classical medical school training of drugs and surgery. So even though I do provide a three-dimensional transformation in patients, mm -hmm. I don't consider that the majority of what I do in terms of helping people. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times in my consultations, I spend a lot of time talking to them about the emotional impacts of chronic illness and why they're there here with me in the first place, you know, what brought them here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's because, you know, a lot of people spend a lot of their lives uh, doing things out of obligation and they're fear fearful of making a change. So mm. basically I started teaching them some things about where I've come from because that's what makes me unique, right? How I can help people. The best thing I can offer people is my life experiences and that's unique to me and how I can find myself in every person I meet. And that's how I choose to help them in a lot of ways. And again, like I said, I don't literally just talk about the lipo, although that's what they're there for. 
um, we do talk a lot about perception. We talk about chronic illnesses. Having spent 20 years in the ER, one of the biggest lessons I learned is, like I mentioned before, people come there for fear and pain mm -hmm. and who knows their body better than them. Mm -hmm. And so many times people are, patients are being dismissed in terms of what they feel intuitively is going on with, with their body. And the doctor dismisses them and says, no, and you don't know what you're talking about and things of that nature. And so perhaps that uh, medical workup is being compromised because of that, you know, mm. and that the patient is fearing, let's say one disease process and the doctor is looking for a different one because they don't trust the patient's intuition about their own body. Uh -huh. And maybe they miss something, right? Uh -huh. Or or maybe they misdiagnose or, or maybe the patient just doesn't really have, uh, has lost their trusting relationship in that physician and it's very hard to heal because it is the job of the per patient to heal, not the doctor, when you don't have that trusting relationship with your healer. I'm very much a follower of people like Joe Dispenza and Dr. Bruce Lipton. And Dr. Bruce Lipton is known for a book called The Biology of Belief. It's excellent because it uses a lot of science to back up his theories, which I think are exquisite. It uses quantum physics as opposed to Newtonian physics as the basis for his understanding of the cellular system because he's a cellular biologist and the cells are literally just the substrate uh, that make up the body. So mm -hmm. he says what you see in the cellular level is what's happening in the general body level. And we can actually prove how the mind and the belief system activate or deactivate certain genes, which is what epigenetics is about, and how chemical cascades and hormone cascades are very profoundly affected mm -hmm. by thought processes and therefore physical consequences occur, hence disease. So the biology of belief is all about your belief system impacts your health, your physical wellness. That's what I'm most fascinated about in general and that's where we can go into more about what um, the technology that we were about we're about to discuss, which is the metaverse. Could you get into a bit, like uh, explain a little bit about how like you work with patients in the metaverse and how you use it to get close to your patients? Yes, let's talk about that. So again, I haven't done, and I'm not supposed to as of yet, do in direct patient contact because it's not... HIPAA compliant yet. The privacy is of primary concern. And since they have not been able to optimize that realm yet, we've used the metaverse more as a tool for patient empowerment and education. So what I've done in, in the meantime is built a digital office, which is open to the public and it's in Horizon Worlds, which is an app on Meta, which is basically the company that um, hosts the virtual reality mask called the Oculus Quest 2. And so that is how somebody would be able to find me in the metaverse is by having an Oculus machine. Um, they would put the mask on, they would have two hand pieces and they would enter the realm. And what's kind of cool about it is I consider it kind of similar to social media. It's just a different way of engaging in social media. So when I'm on Instagram, for instance, I'm going to be educating my public a lot. And I do a lot of videos about what I call meta moments. So, you know, uh, about the metaphysical and how it impacts the health. I do videos called DoorDash consultations. And I'm basically talking about the services that I offer and, and just little words of wisdom that I might've said in a consult, I say on the video. And then of course, I also show before and after videos, et cetera, because people like to see that. Um, so in the metaverse, what's cool about that is I can provide a similar kind of educational service, but it's a little more directed to the people that are in the metaverse with me. And I could have one-on-one -on -one contact with them if we so choose, or I can speak to an audience in a digital auditorium and have you know people interacting with me directly and I can answer their questions, but I typically, I definitely keep it general. I cannot give medical advice in the metaverse, right? That's not 
quite, mm-hmm. um, it, we're not quite there yet. And it's mm-hmm. not that it's not a plan for the future. It's just that I need to be very mindful of what I'm offering in the metaverse at this point in mm-hmm. order to be, uh, what's the word to, to maintain my integrity, right. Yeah. And the, in- the integrity of the platform, um, yeah. because the founder Linda Chavarelli and there, I think she, there's some other co-founders, uh, is a very conscientious podiatrist and some really cool things. So if you throw that mask on, you go into the horizon worlds app, and then you go into her particular platform, which is called house call VR. And she has the auditorium right there when you walk in. And then she has almost like these digital billboards and it has the office name and the, and the physician who is running that office in a bunch of billboards, like along, along the hallway. And so you can enter the world of each individual person or doctor that's hosting in that, uh, in that, audit, in that uh, office system, you know, in-house call VR. So, um, which is really cool. So you could go in and um, do a dentistry one and, and inc- mine included um, in order to keep it fun and interactive, they have t- tend to have little games involved. So the dentist one, you could shoot um, with toothpaste, tooth decay, you know, and shoot at it and make it a little video game kind of thing. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then mine, for instance, she created a digital operating room for me. And there's um, a patient on an operating room table with a monitor beeping. And there's a lipo cannula right there. And you can pick it up and you can pr- basically put it, direct it towards the patient's abdomen. And then you'll see the little fat cell, digital fat cells getting sucked into the cannula and down at like a <laughs> tube system. And then the t- patient's abdomen shrinks. It's really fun. <laughs> that does sound fun. That sounds like a very entertaining way of just uh, engaging in this world. And yes. um, I think, yeah, it sounds really interesting what you folks are doing. And I can imagine there's lots of other people out there that would love to uh, implement the vetiver, in implement the metaverse in their business. I mean, what advice would you give to other business owners looking to take their business into the metaverse? Keep an open mind. Um, I love trailblazing. I love finding new ways to engage with people. And this was perfect for me because again, what's, what's cooler than being in a space that few people have even know about. And once they do, when you get in there, that feeling you have, when you have, when you're directly across the avatar of another person and you're talking to them, believe it or not, the, a more human side comes out of you because your words become of primary importance, little bit of body language because they can see your hands move and your mouth move, but you're still digital, right? So that does nobody knows that you're wearing pajamas and you don't have makeup on or your food in your teeth. They just see the digital wet way of you. And so you, what you're saying to them is so impactful because again, it's so new to you to, to see somebody in that capacity so you're watching and you're you're really con- uh, connecting with their words and their and what they're trying to explain. So I think it's really impactful to engage with people in that way. It's fun too. Yeah. And like I said, since privacy is still an issue, I can I can still speak in generalities. And I'm again, oftentimes, even though lipo is like I said, one of the primary services I offer in the clinic. It doesn't mean I don't love to talk about personal development and psychology, et cetera. So we could go, we could go on for a really long time talking about personal development things in the metaverse that don't require a privacy because we're talking in generalities, you know, I'm not giving them therapy advice, mm-hmm. you know, things to that degree. Um, so education is my primary, is my primary goal. And I'll just give you an analogy based mm-hmm. on my personal experience, even as a patient. How many times have you per- perhaps been to a healthcare practitioner, whether it be a PA, NP, MD, DO, and they barely had enough time for you. They double booked you. You know, you go in there, you get diagnosed with something. You have very little time for education and support. Perhaps it's a disease process that is stigmatized Perhaps it's something that has a profound psychological impact on you. 
yet you will you will expect no help in that realm and then walk away with a few scripts and a lot of questions. What a great opportunity for me to help people in that way, mm. to feel and empower them. Because again, because I have an ER background, I have a really broad knowledge base about a lot of diseases and um, issues that I can talk about in general and really empower a patient into understanding what they're dealing with, whether it be a kidney stone or a heart attack or a stroke or a medication induced side effect. So many topics that I can cover mm -hmm. and make them feel like, wow. And, and then they feel like, wow, you know, it's like the doctor's talking to me, you know, um, and then I'll have time for that. I'll make time for that. And they can walk away with with my understanding, not just theirs too, like somebody who's really hearing and seeing them. Yeah. So that's my primary goal. The concept is if you can have a level of discernment and you mm -hmm. have a level of understanding, you can still learn from a metaverse about your your body and your your wellness. And you don't have to have a medical degree to do that. It's a fantastic use of the metaverse. And it's wonderful to hear like how much you care um, about the people that you're trying to help with this. Uh, I really feel that way. Um, and I'm really happy to see that you folks at Vital Connection at MD are having such an impact on the people you're working with from the sounds of things. Like what is next on the horizon for you folks? What are you looking to uh, do in the future in general? Well, I definitely would love to have the opportunity to eventually engage with people on a more private level if I need to. Um, I do offer, in fact, and have started offering not just only cosmetic procedures as a way of helping people, but since a lot of my conversations with patients involve psychology and personal development, I've also created a mentorship, and I call it the MBS mentorship, which is mind, body, spirit. And they're all connected, obviously. And so that is a way for me to engage with people. Um, almost like, um, I guess I would say a life coaching, but it's so much more than that to me. So I don't like to use the phrase other than to help people understand and recognize where I'm coming from about it. So that's certainly something I'd like to see in the future of um, Vital Connection MD in the metaverse. I certainly offer it um, in person and then also HIPAA compliant platforms that are current, which would be, you know, Zoom is still HIPAA compliant and you believe it or not, FaceTime is still HIPAA compliant. So I can offer it in that way. Support groups would be a really other great way. So collaborating with other professionals would be amazing for our future. And I'm doing that in a way, right? Because House Call VR has a variety of specialties involved. So that's the collaboration. It's so empowering. Mm -hmm. Like I have one of one of the colleagues that's collaborating is an OBGYN. And so she talks a lot about very stigmatized disease systems in the genital region of females, right? So that's pretty interesting. Um, but also just in general, that's why I'm called Vital Connection MD. I like to connect with a variety of professionals and feel like together we can support the patient in a variety of ways. So my ultimate dream would be to have an institute where I could offer a ton of different services and not just medical doctor related. I'm very much into energy work and um, more than Western medicine. I like Eastern. I like spiritual um, I like energy work. I like energy healers. So I, I would ideally love to have an institute that had all of those available. And so I can only hope someday that I could involve maybe things like Reiki, acupuncture, nutritional advice, personal training, um, lectures and auditoriums, cosmetic procedures, like just imagine any sort of possibility in terms of how to feel better both inside and out within one system. It would be incredible mm -hmm. to be able to offer something like that. But in the yeah. near future, in the near future, I'm more into focusing and building my high definition lipo procedures. I really love doing it. It's an art to me. Um, mm -hmm. It's really exciting. I get in the zone, like perhaps like, you know, when people are doing their passion, you know, 
So imagine being able to do what you love for a living and get paid for it. That's so the I dream. do love it. Um, <laughs> and dream. so yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah, it's the dream. And I, the bottom line is I'm, I'm learning some new procedures and that's what I'm in the near future wanting to offer new mm -hmm. procedures like cellulite reduction, that's surgical and some a variety of other things. So mm -hmm. that would be in the near future for me. And I literally just moved. I was in a smaller med spa type space. Um, I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And I moved and by, by moving from a rental to now this is my a building I own. It's much bigger. It's a huge surgical, it's a surgical center. And it's me. I'm the only doctor here. I'm the founder and the CEO. And my husband is the COO. And he's also the head of IV therapy as a paramedic. Mm -hmm. So we do offer that as well. So we're just basically growing from that aspect and bringing in more professionals like estheticians, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I wonder down the line, you know, when I might bring in other doctors, et cetera, but for now it's, it's me. Okay, <laughs> cool. Well, it sounds like you got a lot on and it sounds like you're doing really good work and we're going to include all the links uh, to what you've mentioned in the show notes. So I really do just want to say, yeah, thank you for joining us today on the show, Bill Gay. And um, yeah, I wish you the best of luck in everything that you're doing. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Sam. Growing a company has many hurdles, from securing funding to expanding your business capabilities to ranking better on search. Each business challenge is uniquely complex. The solution to these challenges is growth-focused digital PR and marketing. And that is where our sponsor, Publicize, comes in. Publicize sets itself apart from traditional PR companies. It does not charge large retainers or churns out press releases, whether you've got a newsworthy announcement or not. Publicize builds businesses' online presence and gets high quality PR and media coverage for startups and entrepreneurs who are priced out of a broken PR industry. What's more, listeners of Brainspike Back can find the tools and resources they need to overcome common hurdles that many startups face when trying to generate long-term growth by visiting publicize.co slash bbb. That's publicize.co slash bbb. That is it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've learned something. And if you have benefited from today's episode, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast as these reviews really help us grow the show. You can also follow us wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Just search Brain Spike back and you will find us. We hope you join us for more episodes in the future. And until then, take care. Disclosure. This episode contained a client and a Spacio portfolio company.